Okay, good morning. Uh, and thanks for being here uh, bright and early uh, to get our, our day started. We have um, an exciting second day of projects, but this is a very special moment. It's very nice when institutions celebrate people who do extraordinary work for the institution, and we're gathered this morning to do exactly that. So uh, it's my honor to present the Distinguished Service Award to uh, my ALI colleague and very good friend, um, the person in the ALI who, after Stephanie Middleton sends me the most emails, uh, Steve Wise. Uh, so, <laughs> so the Distinguished Service Award is given from time to time to a member who over many years has played a major role in the Institute as an institution, accepting significant burdens as an officer, council member, committee chair, or project participant, and helping keep the institute in a steady course as the greatest private law reform organization in the world. And some of the greatest names in the history of the ALI are included among the prior recipients. Uh, two former presidents, uh, Rod Perkins and Mike Trainer, a former director, Jeff Hazard, the inventor of the Bosky motion, Bennett Bosky, um, who did other things aside from inventing that motion, <laughs> many other things for many, many years, and three enormously influential members who are present at the annual meeting this year, Gerhard Kasper, Carol Lee, and Bob Mundheim. Steve very much belongs in this august group. Steve was elected to the ALI in 1992. Since then, he has attended 26 annual meetings, missing only four. He was elected to the council in 2012, where he has chaired first the ALI CLE program and marketing committee, and currently chairs uh, the investment committee. Uh, and you don't give this responsibility to someone who you don't think is really responsible. Um, Steve has been a remarkable leader on many of our projects. Uh, he served as a chair of our joint project with the European Law Institute on principles for a data economy and as an advisor to the restatement of consumer contracts, which we'll be discussing in a few minutes, Steve has played an essential role in bringing to the table his encyclopedic knowledge of this field. In my eight years as director of the ALI, I have never seen any advisor play a more significant role on the substance of a project. And these outsized substantive contributions are coupled with extraordinary human qualities. In writing about our joint project with the ALI, where Steve's counterpart as the ELI chair was Lord Thomas of Kumgid, might have mispronounced uh, this Welsh place name, uh, the former Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales, of England and Wales, I suggested that we should think of Steve, his counterpart, as Lord Wise of Sherman Oaks. <laughs> <laughs> but now I think that a better title and one more consistent with Steve's background will be Steve Wise Mensch. So it is now, there's actually, believe it or not, there's an award that comes with the award. So it's, it's my privilege to actually present this award to my friend Steve Wise. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Ricky, and, and thanks to all of you for being here. I'll just say just a couple of words. Uh, first, I uh, want to thank a few people starting um, get emotional here uh, with my, some of my family over here, uh, my wife, Lori, my brother, Barry, my niece, Isabella, uh, the last two live here in uh, D.C., uh, other family members at the, on the West Coast where it's 5.15 in the morning who promised me they'd get up and, and watch this uh, a little bit, particularly my uh, daughters, uh, Julie and Karen, uh, along with Lori, who put up with me all these years uh, watching me look at the UCC or at restatements late at night and sort of humor me that I was uh, sort of doing something. Uh, at the ALI here, uh, when I first got involved, uh, Roberta Ramo and Lance Liebman, uh, we're very encouraging as I work through these things. Uh, Ricky, David, Stephanie, 
uh, have been tremendous uh, friends and colleagues uh, as I work through all this. Uh, I wanted to talk about one specific thing that I've found particularly fun, challenging, intellectually uh, stimulating uh, here at ALI, and that's what I think about as trying to think about subjects across topics uh, here and there. And I think this started off a long time ago uh, where I, in the, my 12th grade advanced placement European history class in the <laughs> mid-60s, uh, you may, some of you may remember a book called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions by Thomas Kuhn, and it's been controversial about paradigm shifting, but the, the point I drew out of that book was to look at pieces of information and see if there are ways to connect them that give you insights about the information. So you don't just sort of go linearly, but you sort of work your way through uh, to figure out uh, how you're going to do that. And, and what I think of as uh, hidden connections as you try to figure these things around, you move pieces of information around the tabletop or now the screen, uh, and you see if a pattern uh, emerges that isn't the traditional uh, pattern you might uh, think about. Uh, in my UCC efforts, this has been uh, very valuable. Uh, you'll hear Wednesday afternoon about a project to amend the UCC, uh, and one part of that was to update the definition of money. Well, that sounds easy until you try to figure out where does it matter. Uh, and the standard online UCC reference, you can go through and see a section that refers to money, and you click on it, and it takes you back to the definition, so that's nice. But the problem is, if you go to the definition and click on it, it doesn't take you back to every place the word money is used. So I undertook a task to manually uh, do that the old-fashioned way, but in all the modern computer technology, you would have what they would call a backlink. Uh, that would, you go to the definition of money, click on it, and it would take you uh, to all the uses of that word. And you can look at how it's used to figure out, you know, sort of how it ought to fit in uh, or work. Uh, as we're finishing up that project, there's a concept uh, that the UCC lawyers love called control, uh, and we're modeling it on other provisions, but you have to step back and look at how it's used in different situations <clears throat> to understand uh, how all this works. <clears throat> and I've got a little graphic. I think it'll come up on the screen, I hope. Uh, give it a second here. Uh, where I've tried to uh, do this, uh, visually for some uh, ALI projects, and we won't wait for it to come up, but uh, so the graphic, oh, there oh, we there go, there we go. So it looks like a mess, but what this is, <laughs> is if you go across the top, uh, you see a list of ALI projects, uh, property projects, uh, uh, consumer, contra consumer contracts, which you'll hear about, uh, right after this, and various other ALI projects, and then you go down on the left and you see concepts that appear in some of these projects. So the traditional way to think about this is to go across the top and say, in property, what do we care about these issues? In consumer contracts, what do we care about in these issues? In the restatement of uh, restitution and unjust enrichment, some of these issues pop up. But what I've been trying to do, and what I've had an immense amount of fun doing at ALI, is instead of going across the top, you go down the left-hand side, and look at the ideas and the notions and track those across and see how the concepts, like the word notice, for example, is down towards the bottom of that chart. Is it, should it have the same meaning in each case? Does a meaning in one restatement contribute to or inform the meaning in another restatement? And it forces you to think through uh, what's, what's going on. And I, I have found that really a, a terrific opportunity here at uh, ALI. And, and I, encourage people as they work on different projects to uh, not go down what I'm thinking of here as the vertical silos of a particular restatement, which might correspond to a law school class you had, uh, but rather think about the concepts and see how they play out across and see if a concept as used in one area can inform or help you think about the same word, which may or may not fit uh, in another area because it's a different purpose that's going on. And you'll hear a lot in a little bit about reasonable notice and how that fits in in consumer contracts uh, and how does that compare or not compare uh, to the use of the word notice uh, in other areas. So once again, uh, Ricky and ALI and everybody, thank you very much and I hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.